Today I rise with a spirit of compromise and collaboration. This being my third term, third and final term, uh, being a teacher from Detroit Public Schools, I understand uh, the issues that have come before us year after year, session after session, with respect to making sure that we advance uh, and move the needle forward on adequate funding. As my colleagues said before me, this, this package is not everything that we want, but it certainly is reflective and better than some of what we've seen. Um, I, I really, truly believe that this is a step in the right direction with respect to special education. Uh, last term, I had a resolution of which one of our former colleagues was the first to sign, and I'm hopeful that I'll bring that resolution forward again, calling on the U.S. Department of Education to adequately fund special education, because there is a hole. And our United States Department of Education has not provided adequate funding to our state. And so we need to work together to make sure that we call on them to do that. But I have to say, the chair then, Representative Tim Kelly, was the first to sign my resolution in support of that. And I'm hopeful when I bring that resolution forward again that we can be uh, bipartisan in nature in calling on the U.S. Department of Education to do that. I know how important it is to have equity in the classroom and to have an equitable education system is only possible when all of our children are provided individualized resources they need to succeed. While there is still room for improvement at the end of the day, this budget does help to change the status quo for special education students in Michigan, something that Detroit Public School has had the lion's share of for years, and many times we could not uh, uh, realize the supports necessary for our students because of the impact and the lack of funding. So I applaud members on both sides of the aisle, and I really give you about a B, B plus for addressing the special education funding gap and providing partnership districts the space to improve without the school closure requirement. This is epic. Far too long we've had patchwork policies that have come out of the house that have sent mandates to our respective districts. Certainly, as a former teacher, I do not support giving mandates to districts. We must empower, uh, through policy, our respective districts to advance quality education and removing the mandate, moving from a, a shell to a may uh, when schools are facing closure, really helps to improve the outcomes of all of our districts. Ensuring school districts and communities already struggling won't have yet another concern add to their plate. This budget is an important step, as I highlighted before, in the right direction, but we have to keep fighting. And so I am hopeful that the spirit that we have in the House today of collaboration will continue and even close the gap on how we work uh, more productively together. I'm voting today in favor of not only the budget, but the commitment to continue fighting, the commitment to continue being bipartisan, and the commitment to continue working together. There is still a lot of work to do, but for the first time in many years, the school aid budget will help lay a path to help us get there. I know we must all vote our respective districts and our conscious, but collectively as a state, I see this as a right step forward uh, in making sure that our children can adequately continue school throughout the state of Michigan and make sure that we're not putting our schools in harm's way for count day. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.